Hey guys, so I thought I might do a video today on passwords and all the issues surrounding them because uh, no doubtedly many of you who use the password manager LastPass uh, may have heard that it's being bought out by a company called LogMeIn and a lot of people don't really like LogMeIn because they have a history of uh, price hiking effectively, uh, with very little uh, warning. And uh, that's gotten a lot of people who use LastPass nervous enough to actually ditch the service. So that's kind of inspired me to take a look at how I manage my passwords and, um, and, and tell you about a few solutions that I have come up with. Okay, so uh, what is LastPass? Because LastPass is still a viable option um, if you're willing to accept the conditions in which it currently exists. So LastPass is, um, or at least I used it as a browser plugin, but it does have some, um, it has some like other software as well that's not attached to a browser. But it's um, primarily a browser plugin. And what you do is you would sign up to a website and then it would come up with a little dialog box saying, would you like to save your username and password and even log in automatically next time you visit the site. And then you would select your settings, you would choose to save the password or whatever, and then you would never have to remember that password again. It gave you the, um, the benefit of actually being able to make that password an incredibly long um, string of random characters, punctuation marks, and numbers as well, and also vary up the case. It could be a completely random um, set of characters, and it would be something that you wouldn't have to remember. And LastPass, as well, as I understand it, is an end-to-end, -end, uh, it works with end-to-end -end encryption, which means that it scrambles your password at your side, on your computer, then it sort of transmits it back to its server, um, and then when needed, comes back to you. Um, but when it's in transit, it is always encrypted. And it kind of has to be. You can't have plain text passwords flying around the internet. Now, LastPass is not the most secure way of doing things because, of course, once someone cracks your LastPass password, um, they not only have access to all of your passwords, but they have access to all of the accounts and all of the usernames attached to you. And that could basically be used to rob your blind. And that's when, when I talk about security and when I talk about encryption, when I talk about privacy, to be honest, that's the number one um, thing that I, you know, that's the number one reason why I speak about it. Yeah, I understand that big data and government surveillance is something that I'm against and probably most of you are against in the way that it's currently being employed in Western democracies today. But um, quite frankly, I'm, I, I, I don't want to get robbed blind. And I've come pretty close in the past as well. Um, it's very easy to make a mistake, even when you're as um, when you're trying to be as aware and trying to be as security conscious as possible. There's always room for human error. So LastPass does have two-factor authentication, which is absolutely essential to use. It means that you have um, it uh, requires something that you know, your password, and something that you have, which is usually a, a phone or a, like a specialized security device. But you can use your phone, and it doesn't have to be a smartphone as well. I use my regular old Nokia 3310, and it just gives me a you know a second factor there, uh, which is great. Um, it's about as secure as I need it to be. I mean, it's unlikely that my phone's going to be nicked and it's significantly less likely that it's going to be nicked for the purposes of breaking into my LastPass account. But if it is, they also need to know the password and my email address as well, because that's what you use to log in. But if they get all of that information, then I am doomed, which is a problem. Um, it's not necessarily the biggest problem in the world if I lock myself out of my LastPass account. It's annoying as all hell, but um, pretty much all of the services that I'm signed up to have a password reset system providing you can gain access to your email. So what you don't want to do is use your password manager to memorize your email because if you can't get into your password manager and you can't get into your email, then you're stuck. It also is really super beneficial to have second factor authentication on your email because that's significantly important if it's going to be used as your backup. So there's that. Um, I used LastPass up until recently. Um, it's not an open source solution, but it is a Linux friendly solution. Um, Yes, you can. Um, there is a premium version available, and it's. Uh, I think it includes the mobile app, which I think is pretty good, and it is very, very, very convenient to have all your passwords synced across all the devices that you want them synced for. But yeah, for the love of God, do not have like do not auto save your password on your phone. You can sort of debate whether or not you'd want to use it on a desktop computer if you sort of live on your own and. 
the only way to sort of really access it is to break into your house while you're in there then there's you know and it also as well if you've got like an encrypted hard drive on top of that then they have to get through the local encryption as well so you know it there, there are a, a whole number of solutions at your disposal but the essence is that LastPass is probably the most convenient way to manage all your passwords but again not an open source solution and it is owned by a company that a lot of people no longer trust so what are our other options well you can have a look for um services that are similar to LastPass. i'm not going to talk about any today for me it's because i haven't found any that i feel that i can trust in the same way that i can trust LastPass. part of that is, is because i just don't know that industry very well i don't know sort of the password manager software scene so i'm going to sort of go with what i know on this one so i had a look at local um password managing databases now this is quite suitable for me because i pretty much do all of my work from one computer so providing that i keep my passwords encrypted and you know providing that someone who just has physical access to my computer can't um sort of you know get through into that encrypted database then i'm generally okay but if i've got someone again breaking into my house trying to decrypt my password database i've probably got bigger things to worry about if i'm completely honest so um yeah local um local encryption sort of works really quite well for me because again i don't have to synchronize it across any kinds of devices so the piece of software i use is called key pass x and it's available in most repositories of most distributions. And there is a key, pa uh, key pass X2 in the works coming soon, which is more compatible with more databases. So it works like it would do with just about any kind of software, very similar to, to like a, a regular database program. You've got a database program, you've got a database file, you use the database program to open the database file, you put in your password. You can even have two-factor authentication with that, where you have like a key file and you have to provide both the key file and the password in order to unlock the database. But like I say, because the only way to actually access my password database is locally, um, and I work from home and obviously live at home, um, it's incredibly unlikely that anyone's gonna even sort of, you know, see my passwords in action, uh, let alone be able to swipe them. So it's a reason, it's, 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 it's a perfect situation for me. It's a perfect scenario. It's also an open source solution as well. And again, local. So that means that I am not going to get like an overnight price hike. It doesn't mean that I'm going to have to suddenly pay up um, or have to just sort of rush find another service at the last minute. No, it means I am in complete control of my data. I know that it's encrypted. I know that um, it's backed up as well. I've got like, you know, you obviously keep your database file in a second location and that's why it's encrypted. So that if someone were to sort of access that second location and stumble across that file that they they, they then wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to have access to all your stuff because again still really important that no one gains access to your database file because not only does it have all your passwords on but it also has a list of all your accounts which again means that someone can rob you blind but like i say it's um it's a solution that works for me because it keeps all the information uh, under my control and whereas i'm not a security expert i know enough people that are involved professionally in security and uh, a number of them i know use keypass x as their local password storage it also allows you to um, send passwords through uh, services like email for example as well if you need to tell someone else a password it's not a smart idea just to, to send them a password in a plain text email. That's kind of a bit silly. Yes, you can use encrypted email, but to be honest, I would rather be in complete control and in full knowledge that my data is completely 100% encrypted exactly on my terms. So sending over a key pass um, database to someone else uh, gives me the sort of the peace of mind that I personally require. Uh, LastPass also has password sharing options, uh, but I haven't used them, so I can't really vouch for their quality. Keypass X... I'm going to say that out of all of the um, out of all of the ways of managing passwords, this is the one that I would recommend, providing that it fits your um, sort of your workflow. You can take that database file and it can be portable as well. So you can have um, you can put your database um, your password database on a on a USB if you need to use it across multiple computers. Uh, you can even put your database file on um, Dropbox or another sort of cloud service, uh, and then you can access it using multiple machines in the full knowledge that that's the most up to date version of your password database. And I know a number of people that do that. 
So you've got a lot of options. I also like the password generator on KeePass X as well. Uh, the password generator generates a password that is is like 25 characters long, all random numbers and letters. Um, so it's um, it's pretty good. Uh, LastPass also has a, a random password generator. I think the default settings aren't as good as KeePass X's, but you can obviously switch them up. You can make passwords pronounceable, memorable, or you can make them completely random. And it does give you a rating on the security of your password um, as well. So yeah, KeePass X, that's generally my recommendation if you can find it to suit your needs conveniently. There is obviously a convenience factor at play, but you don't want to use convenience at the expense of security. So what other options are there? Well, the other options that I'm going to talk about today are going to be ones that don't involve software solutions. There are a number of benefits to um, these ways, but there are also a number of significant drawbacks. Okay, so one method that doesn't involve using software to manage all your passwords is simply to use memory tricks. I know a number of people that use a number of memory tricks to remember all of their usernames and passwords. That being said, though, I don't think I could do that for all of the accounts that I have. But the people that I do know who do use these memory tricks tend to only have like about five or six online accounts. So this one is not for the kind of person that has lots of internet accounts. This is really one for um, someone that doesn't have enough internet accounts to make a password manager worthwhile. So uh, basically one of the, the examples for a memory trick is to think of a password and then instead of typing that actual password, for every character that you type, it's not the character, it's the character up and to the left. And that way you get a seemingly random password, but you can use the initial word as a clue. So for example, if your password, um, if you had, a, say, a Tumblr blog and you wanted to log in, now you would take the, um, the word Tumblr, for example, and then you would just take the, all of the characters that go up and to the left, and then you would just type those instead of typing Tumblr. That would be a little bit, that's a little bit too simplistic, especially now that I've just blurted it out there on the internet, but it would be a tip a bit like that. Obviously, you wouldn't discuss the methodology with someone else. And then you can use clues to um, to actually remember, remember what password you use for different websites. But again, only really useful if you, um, if you have only a couple of usernames and passwords. The final one, that I'm going to talk about today, it's going to be the writing down option because it's one that I feel is at least worth discussing, even though uh, a lot of people have very strong feelings against it. Again, this is one of those solutions that works in certain situations, but not others. So what you can do is um, take a book or a notepad and just write down every username and password that you have for every single account. Now, again, if you've got hundreds, and I did a count the other day, I have hundreds of accounts with hundreds of different websites. Yeah, I, it's going to be a lot of aggro to write all of those usernames and passwords down. That being said, and get them right as well. That's the important thing. That being said, though, of course, uh, if you only have maybe 20 accounts, then it's a significantly more viable option. It's local storage, so you know that someone online isn't going to lift it, which means you know exactly what your threats are, and they're real-world threats. You can lock it in a little, um, you know, sort of metal safe deposit box, and then you've got your effective encryption, I guess. Um, you can reasonably easily back it up. I mean, obviously, you can't back it up in real time, but you can write the password down twice and keep it in a second location. You could even combine it with the previous method of uh, writing down only the clue to the password, knowing full well that the actual password is just a key up and to the left. Again, it's not foolproof, it's just an added layer or it's an added step in the process which might buy you a little time if someone does end up nicking one of your books with all your passwords written down. Uh, but providing you're sensible with the actual um, sort of placement of where you put, you know, where you uh, leave your password information, it can be a very secure solution. Okay, so those are your options. You can use LastPass and trust it with your information because there is an element of trust involved with LastPass, but again, it is the most convenient. You can choose local storage, and I've only used KeePass X as an example. It's the one that I believe is included in the Tails OS, which is the reason uh, which made me choose it. I mean, if the people that uh, use Tails think that it's it's a decent password manager, it's certainly good enough for me. Uh, you can also use memory tricks or you can just use the old fashioned written down 
uh, method. Obviously, these solutions are going to work to varying degrees of success depending on your workflow, depending on how much you travel, and depending on a whole bunch of other factors. And this, of course, is certainly not an exhaustive list. Now, just before I leave you, I do feel it necessary to point out that even though there could very well be an open source alternative to LastPass, you're still relying on other people's servers. And that does not give you full control of your own information. So it, that, again, is worth bearing in mind. Even an open source solution can have an overnight price hike just on the, um, on the cost of keeping your data on their servers. It could very well be less likely, but it's certainly not unheard of. And another point that I really should raise with you, because I kind of feel that this video would be somewhat dishonest if I wasn't completely clean with you, and that's that LastPass have had a number of security breaches. Uh, it has not resulted in passwords being leaked as far as I know, and I'll confirm this before I actually upload this part of the video, but it's still a target for hackers which i think is the most important thing and your password is or your password information is um actively being targeted if it is on a server with a whole bunch of other passwords and if they do crack it they've not only got your password they've got all your accounts and usernames as well I also feel that it's worth pointing out that it's worth considering using different usernames for various accounts. It just makes it um, a little bit more secure because it's an extra piece of information that isn't certain um, when, you know, if you ever get compromised. So that's about it from me today. Please, please, please leave any other solutions down in the comment section below or maybe endorse one of the ones I mentioned in this video. Uh, let's have a discussion about it because we are significantly stronger when we think together. So that's about it from me today. Thanks very much for watching and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.